uh, from Kolkata. I am a teacher of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Yesterday we had covered the nine mental disturbances which normally occur in a human being. <clears throat> they are also called as, in a lighter way, as mental distractions. And we saw, based on these nine mental distractions, there are four others which happen in a human being. Just to revise, these distractions or mental disturbances are disease, disease of the body, idleness, doubt, carelessness, sloth, lack of attachment, misapprehension, failure to attain a base for concentration, instability. They are all distractions of the mind of various sort. They cover a very wide spectrum. And uh, these nine in turn lead to further uh, distractions. Uh, one is dukkha, pain, suffering, dejection, trembling, and breathing issues concerning inhalation and exhalation. Now, dear friends, the beauty is that uh, Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras had referred to them that when you do Om chanting, then these distractions are removed, they go away. And uh, in the succeeding sutras, he is going into details of other methods, other ways by which one can actually remove these 13 kind of, you can say, mental and physical health issues just by the simple practice of bringing the mind, fixing the mind on one object. And once this is done, then these disturbances go away. Uh, Patanjali has uh, a deep liking for Ishwara. He considers Ishwara as an object of practice, as an object of attention, single-pointed attention. So here in a sutra, he's actually talking about focusing, meditating, practicing, bringing the mind onto one object. Eka Tattva is what he says. And then he says, the support for this mind can be any object. And he, as I told you initially, has a liking for Ishwara. So he brings in Ishwara. And we have seen there are a number of sutras on Ishwara in Patanjali Yoga Sutras. And then he goes on further and says that Om represents uh, Ishwara. So he is speaking about Om, the benefits of chanting of Om, uh, the, raise, the, the rise in consciousness because of Om, and the certain other details of Om. So Patanjali has uh, focused tremendously on Om chanting as a method for removing all mental disturbances, as a method for sorting out physical health and mental health issues. And it is a very simple way, a simple technique. Chanting does not take much of uh, concentration. Uh, chanting is a simple activity. And he even goes on to say in one of the succeeding sutras, we will see that, where he says, if you are not able to chant Om, you can listen to Om. Listen to the chant of Om, the, the repetition of the sound of Om. That also is very powerful enough. So in today's world, all of us can easily put on an app or a YouTube download on Om chanting and listen to it while you're doing some other work. So the Om chant keeps on working and it keeps on working on our mental health and our physical health. But this has to be done, preferably in a devotional mood. So when we do it in a devotional mood, we find these mental distractions, which in a way are obstacles to yoga, which are a difficulty on the path to concentrating the mind to higher and higher levels of yogic realization. So those start going away. And... Uh, 
he has given many methods uh, by which uh, this can be done. So let's look at some of the methods. The first method, which I find is a very simple method and a very powerful method and is commonly used around the world is uh, by putting attention on the exhaling and retaining the breath. So we have seen there are various techniques, especially in Buddhism, where they use the breath as a support for meditation, as a support for going to deep levels of concentration. So if you can, as I, as I told you earlier, if you can uh, be focused on a meditation which is around about Om, which is around Ishvara, that is considered to be the best way, the most powerful way in which you unleash tremendous powers and insight in you. Chance you are unable to do it or you are found finding it difficult because of any reason, then the other alternatives have been given. And they are alternate methods, but the basic essential method is based around Ishvara and is based around the chanting of Om. So let us look at these alternative and optional techniques which Patanjali has spoken about to remove our mental and physical health issues. So one of them, he says, is fix your mind on the control of breath, on your prana. And by breathing control, you will be able to bring about stability in the mind. Now here, actually, if you see in the Sutra, he talks about two activities of breathing. One is exhaling and the other is retaining. So exhaling is when the air is going out. That is the time when we have to control. We have to slow down the exhaling, the exhalation. And the second method he talks about is not breathing in, but retaining. Once the breath has been taken in automatically by our body, we have to hold it inside. So when we do these two simple practices, we find that our mind slows down, that our breathing also slows down. And it is in this condition that the mind becomes steady and we find that the body becomes light and the two are intimately connected, the body and the mind. So uh, another commentator, Hariharananda, he says that when you are actually uh, retaining the breath, and controlling also the exhalation, the nerves of the body relaxed. So what it means is if you have certain issues which are connected to nervous tension, which are connected to uh, uh, difficulties where the nerves are not steady, then by pranayam it can be controlled. And if you do pranayam for a long period of time, then a happy feeling of lightness comes and it spreads over the whole body. So by doing this uh, pranayam over a long period of time, by experiencing a sense of lightness and happiness in the whole body, one enters into the practice of meditation at a higher levels in an easy way. And at the one-pointed concentration of the mind gets cultivated with this pranayama and now the mind becomes free from vrittis, from mental distractions and approaching the state of samadhi becomes simple and easy. So uh, we looked at breathing as a technique, as a method by which we can control our mental distractions, our health issues. The next method which he suggests is again a very interesting method. And this is one of those difficult to understand sutras. Here he says that you can uh, put your attention, focus your attention on any sense related object. And as your focus rises, it will cause the mind to become steady, controlled, calm. And he gives an example. Even Vyasa, one of the major commentators and one of the first example, he says if you concentrate on the tip of your nose, the nose is a sense organ. And if you concentrate on the tip of the nose, so this is the sense object. And here you can experience divine 
or supernormal sense of smell. He goes on to state some more such sense objects on which one can uh, practice bringing the mind to. He says when you focus your attention on the palate, one can experience supernormal color. That is our ability to see colors goes beyond the normal range. And when one is putting attention on the tip of the tongue, then you get super normal taste. This again is something which is phenomenal. And if you are able to put your attention, meditate on the middle of the tongue, then you find super normal power sensation of touch. And if you are able to put your concentration, attention on the root of the tongue, then you experience super normal sound. That means your sound sensing abilities go beyond the normal range of 20 uh, cycles to 20,000 cycles per second. So here uh, Patanjali has given that it is not necessary that you have to focus on certain regular objects only. You can even focus on something which is a sense object. And you can use that sense object as a support for meditation, as a support for the mind. And the best part is, as I was telling you initially, Shankaracharya says that when you are listening to the sound of Japa, when you are listening to say Om chanting, that also becomes a support for the mind. That also becomes an alambana for a mind. And this audible Japa, uh, can be considered as a sense object and it is perfectly legitimate as per uh, Shankaracharya and it again gives you the benefit that the mind becomes steady and the mind becomes uh, clear so when the mind becomes steady when the mind becomes clear then you experience uh, higher states of concentration very easily and by doing this practice you will find that your illnesses of the mind, illnesses of the body will start disappearing, you will start recovering, the body will heal, the mind will heal. It is even said that uh, these are simple practices and anybody can do it. So Hari Arananda, who was uh, present as a yogi about a century back, you can say just slightly before modern times, he says that when uh, he was fixing his mind on the tip of the nose. He could get a very novel aroma, a very beautiful scent in that space where he was in. And he says that once when you get these kind of results, then you develop a faith in the yogic practice. to develop a faith in these yoga sutras. And then your journey becomes easy, fast, and can go very, very deep at very, very high levels of concentration. But here he mentions that this has to be done continuously for a couple of days. And here you have to be in a state of fasting or on a low diet so that this can get triggered. And again, uh, you must be in a place where disturbances are minimum so that you can practice focusing your mind on a particular sense object in the right way and experience results, get a conviction on Yoga Sutras and start practicing for higher and higher levels of meditation. The next method which Patanjali talks about is again another very uh, interesting method. It is even a cryptic method because different commentators have spoken very uh, differently about it. But let's see what it is all about. So here he says, you can study the mind when your mind is free of pain and when your mind is luminous. Now, what does it mean when the mind is free of pain and the mind is luminous? So we have seen that uh, when we are in a pure form, when we are in a form where uh, we are experiencing lightness of the mind, we are experiencing goodness in the mind. We are experiencing pleasant feelings in the mind. Then that time, the pain 
is not there in the body and that time the body is luminous the consciousness level is high and in these states uh, the body is free from rajas and tamas rajas and tamas are two such uh, qualities of nature which if present in you at that point of time will lead to pain will lead to suffering so when these two are not present what is present sattva is present and sattva represents high consciousness sattva represents a blissful state sattva represents high happiness so by doing this also one attains stability of the mind so one can concentrate or vyasa suggests a method he says concentrate on the lotus chakra in the heart so when you concentrate on the lotus chakra in the heart you will find that with practice you will develop a sense of feeling a high level of luminosity a high level of consciousness a high level of knowledge in your heart region you will experience sattva and this will enable you to see uh, knowledge to see objects uh, the way they are never seen before so it opens up the doors of intuition it opens up the doors of uh, uh, pragya doors of pratibha and then you start getting your sixth sense operation so uh, the basic idea is that intelligence is present everywhere but intelligence is essentially sattvic in nature intelligence growing in you you find that all parts of your body are responding to a higher consciousness and this leads to a higher state of happiness this leads to <clears throat> a higher state of luminosity and this also is object based meditation now some commentators say and vyasa also comments he says in this sutra just not the object you can even have an element of subject based meditation you can meditate on the fact that i am meditating you can meditate on the i am ness and when you meditate on the i am ness which is free from rajas and tamas which is calm unlimited selfless then you will find that you reach a steadiness of the mind a calmness of the mind and this then becomes the ground on which the mental disturbances start disappearing the physical health issues start going away from you and you then move on to the higher states of samadhi higher levels of concentration with ease and comfort one method where Uh, patanjali is talking about concentrating on a person who is free from desire as his object he says the goal of yoga can be attained by meditation on a pure minded yogi when you are contemplating on those pure minds who are free from desire and who have purity of mind and who are working for a selfless goal then such people on meditating on their personality on meditating on their image you will find that your mind will reach a higher state of sattva you will experience steadiness in the mind you will experience a calmness in the mind so essentially dear friends you you all know and realize that we are affected by the company we keep so so here patanjali says uh, be in good company that's for sure but he also says that you can focus your attention on a guru you can focus your attention on somebody who can impart you knowledge 
who can guide you in reaching the truth because he has seen the truth so when you are focusing on him when you are meditating on him when you are surrendering to him you will find that you reach a state of a pure sattvic mind and this pure sattvic mind can then easily become fixed and free from all personal desires we know of many hindu spiritual traditions where the guru is revered like a god where the guru is revered by surrendering to him where you serve the guru with the core of your heart in complete bhakti and when you do that the service to the guru this meditation to the guru becomes the highest form of meditation and this type of focus in this uh, guru meditation will automatically remove all uh, these mental disturbances all the physical health issues the diseases and you will find that you are in a state where you are desireless now you are seeing the truth and your guru is showing you the path and the guru is accompanying you on this journey to samadhi and beyond to liberation but we also know that sometimes there have been certain scams about gurus so one has to be very very careful in how one chooses a guru and based on that one must move with care but the principle that focusing on a guru who is of pure mind provides tremendous results not only of a steady mind but he can open up the path of your soul so that you can achieve complete soul realization ishwar realization in the simplest easiest quickest possible manner one more uh, method which patanjali has suggested this this is slightly uh, probably difficult to practice but uh, it is a very powerful method and uh, i would say i have personal experience of this so here he says that you must do your sadhana you must do your ishvara pranidhana you must do your bhakti of ishvara surrender of ishvara the commitment to ishvara to such stands that even when you are sleeping you are getting dreams of ishvara ishvara is coming to you in your sleep and you awaken up from sleep full of joy full of pleasantness full of a feeling of bliss and if you are practicing the uh sadhana of your ishvara on a daily basis in the daytime if you are committed to the guru and if you are committed to the ishvara the path shown by him then you will find that you are performing all your activities with ishvara consciousness considering as if the ishvara is there imparting knowledge to you he is the adi guru he is showing you the path and you are progressing in life on various levels the mental the physical the spiritual level so here you have to have a 24 hour bond a 24 hour emotional connect with the ishvara only then can you expect to have dreams of ishvara at night because in the day when you are implanting the sanskaras of ishvara in your chitta then these sanskaras remain in the chitta and at night time when the inputs from the outer objects or through your senses have stopped then these internal sanskaras become active and you start seeing dreams of ishvara you start seeing the highest of the highest so dear friends uh, very very important uh, to be focused to be connected to ishvara in the daytime shankaracharya has a slightly different take on this sutra uh, many many commentators have their own interpretation of the meaning of the sutras So what Shankaracharya says, he says during deep sleep, 
this chitta of ours is free from vrittis because there are no disturbances in the mind. The mind is at rest. So when you get up from sleep at that point of time, you again close your eyes and meditate on the uh, the peace which you are experiencing during deep sleep. So when you do that practice, then you will find that your chitta vrittis, the fluctuations of the mind stop happening, they start diminishing and you will also find that the mental and the physical issues you were battling with, those 13 which we refer to will start disappearing, will slowly steadily go away from your life. So just to recap, uh, what were those uh, uh, things which the mental illnesses and the physical illnesses which go away? Once when you uh, start meditating your mind onto one object, they are disease, idleness, doubt, carelessness, loss, lack of detachment, misapprehension, failure to attain a base for concentration, instability, all of them go away. And not only this, even further, things like suffering, rejection, trembling, breathing issues get sorted out. So, Patanjali even suggests in a very, uh, I would say, a worldly, uh, though you will not find any other sutra where he's talking about other people. But here in the sutra, he says, uh, in, a, in a social mannerism, he says, if you make friends with people who are happy, then that will help you to have a clear mind. If you are compassionate to people who are suffering, this will also give you clarity of the mind. And if you are listening to the words, if you are in the company of people who are holy, and then you will find joy coming to you. But stay equidistant from people who are non-virtuous. So when you do these four practices on a daily basis, moment to moment, when you're interacting in the world outside with other people, then you find your mind, mental clarity reaches a very high state. And this high state of mental clarity can lead to steadiness of mind, can lead to high levels of concentration and samadhi. So all that you need to do is be friendly with happy people, be compassionate towards people who are suffering, be in the company of holy people so their joy, their happiness rubs on you and maintain some distance, maintain, uh, be indifferent to people who are not virtuous. By this way, your clear mind will come and this will help you on the path of truth. The last method which essentially defines the, I would say the mindset of Patanjali, he says, Steadiness of the mind can be obtained by putting your attention, by meditating on anything you like, anything of your inclination. So with this simple, powerful sutra, he wraps up the various options which he has given by which you can bring the mind to peace, by which you can remove the mental disturbances, mental distractions and make your path of yoga easy. So he says, any desired object, yatha bhimata, according to your inclination. And there is no dogma about it. So Vakaspati Mishra, one of the commentators, interestingly says, now what more can one say? You can do your meditation on anything you want. You have complete independence. And anything you meditate on, whether an object or a subject, will lead to Samadhi. That is the beauty of the whole thing. Patanjali is not concerned about the method. Patanjali says to follow any method. But you must reach the highest state of concentration. You must reach Samadhi. Now we know that in our country and worldwide, the concept of asana, the yogic posture, has been highly popularized. And uh, uh, it is said by the family 
who who did phenomenal work in taking the study of asanas the practice of asanas to the whole world they say that even by asana by focusing your attention on the asana you can achieve samadhi uh say for instance pranayama even by controlling the breath focusing your attention on the breath you can achieve samadhi that means even by focusing on the fan in your room on the tube light in your room or on the head on your head or on say the window any object you can achieve samadhi it is the concentration which has to be sustained which has to be without interruption which has to be long term which has to be done with devotion and then we find the object does not matter and similarly the subject also does not matter if you are putting your attention if you are meditating on your mother that also will work wonders for you if you follow the methodology uh given by patanjali that you have to focus meditate for long term without interruptions uh with devotion then will happen you have to continue this meditation with faith with vigor with memory enter the higher and higher levels of samadhi and then the intuitions will come the higher knowledge will come so it does not matter you might even meditate on your dog because the dog also is a subject or uh, you can meditate on on your own inner self so that is the beauty of patanjali's understanding of yoga and what he has taught us and this also means that these practices were prevalent in that time the people the yogis the rishis the munis were free to choose any object of their choice any subject of their choice and reach the highest states possible of human existence because once when you reach uh the lower samadhis then you proceed to the higher samadhis and in the path you start receiving siddhis mystical powers or supernatural powers because with pragya with intuition supernatural knowledge comes in and when supernatural knowledge comes in supernatural powers automatically follow so when these supernatural powers come then the siddhis come and then you go further you you go further to the highest level of samadhi by continuing your practice by discriminating between the purusha and the mana and the chitta between the purusha the chitta and the vastu the object outside and as you keep on practicing further and further you gain higher and higher levels of power of discrimination power of discernment and finally you reach the highest state of samadhi called dharma make samadhi and when you reach this ultimate state of samadhi then the liberation process starts then mukti starts then kevalya starts and that is the culminating point the ending point of uh, the yogic practice you reach the state of moksha you reach the state of liberation absolute independence so dear friends uh, patanjali has done a marvelous job beautiful work he says practice any kind of meditation any kind of meditation i repeat on any object any subject anything under the world anything in the sky anything imaginary also not present in the world then too you will be able to reach the highest goals of yoga so dear friends uh, here we uh, come to a halt uh, thank you so much for being a part of this spiritual journey thank you so much for being interested in understanding this path of yoga this path of meditation and how can one simplify the journey and how does this journey the spiritual path this meditative path take care of our physical illnesses of the body it 
diseases of the body and how does it take care of the mental distractions mental disturbances mental health issues is phenomenal we slowly start removing all the vrittis which are causing pain all the vrittis which are causing suffering and we reach higher and higher higher and higher and by this methodology you will find that you will be experiencing permanent happiness and once you get this permanent happiness once you are able to experience this 24/7 you can comfortably teach your family members you can share that with people of your society you can even guide the people of your country and all the people of this world to stay in a state of permanent happiness so that is the prayer we have for you that is the reason we are doing these talks on the yoga sutras and that is the goal we are aspiring for looking forward to your kind support looking forward to your being part of this journey and looking forward to experiencing that permanent happiness and sharing it with other people in your life thank you so much god bless you see you tomorrow same time at 7 pm and if you have any comments if you have any questions please put them in the comment box if you liked today's talk kindly put down uh, uh your comments about it or you may like uh the the icon there uh thank you so much god bless you let us take humanity to another level of existence and let us walk together so that we can heal all that is not proper in our society and let us move on to the next age of satyuga as we progress on the path of yoga thank you so much god bless each one of you friends see you tomorrow